Welcome back. This is going to be the last video that I'm going to have on naming ionic compounds. And in our last video, we went from the formula to the name. This time, we're going to go from the name to the formula. Now, there's something that we need to pay particularly more attention to uh, whenever we go from the name to the formula, and that's in making sure that we balance our charges and make sure that our compound itself is electrically neutral, that the number of positive, uh, that the uh, positive ion uh, balances out with the negative ion, so our charges have a total uh, net value of zero. So we're going to jump right into this, and uh, we're going to take a look at silver carbonate first. Here we have silver in the middle, in the middle of our periodic table, Ag, and like we've always done in the past, we write down the charge value, and carbonate is right here, CO3 two negative. CO3 2 negative. Now the only thing we have to deal with when we uh, when we look at polyatomics is that these two together, the CO3 together has a charge of negative 2. So again uh, when we carry on we're going to know that we need two positive charges to balance out the two negative charges so it's going to be Ag2 CO3. And we don't need any brackets. We're going to get to brackets in some of the examples that we have further down. Uh, but we're not going to use brackets uh, to begin with here. So Ag2CO3. All right, let's move on to number two. Potassium hydrogen phosphate. So we have potassium here. Here they write it as monohydrogen phosphate, but we can just write it as hydrogen phosphate. On your uh, chart, it'll be hydrogen phosphate. So we write down K positive 1. Hydrogen phosphate is HPO4, and it has negative 2. So again, just like in our last example, it'll be K2HPO4. OK, and again, I know that it's a little bit difficult with the pen that I'm using. Um, but we have to make sure that when we write these, all capital letters are actually capital letters. We can't uh, have a small, a small letter in here. Okay, moving on to our third example. Aluminum hydroxide. So aluminum is here. Al positive 3 and hydroxide right here and that is OH negative 1. This is when we're going to use a bracket because we need three negative uh, total negative charges to balance out the aluminum. So it's going to be ALOH and we're going to group our bracket or surround our sorry surround our compound or polyatomic ion with uh, with a bracket so that we end up with um, it's this whole ion that carries the negative three charge so we have to make sure that we do not write it OH3 that would be incorrect okay we need to use a bracket to make sure that we do that okay to make sure that the charges are balanced properly okay Here's our fourth one, sodium hydrogen carbonate. Okay, so sodium is here. Hydrogen carbonate is right up here. And our charge on sodium, Na positive 1. And here it's HCO3 negative. So our charges are going to balance out. That gives us NaHCO3, and then we're finished with that one. That one worked out quite nicely. And our last one, calcium acetate. So calcium has a charge of positive 2. Acetate, it's a long, long chemical formula there. So we have Ca2 positive, and then acetate. CH3COO 
and that is negative. And don't worry why the carbons are written in two different places here, or the oxygens are written in two different places. Don't worry about that right now. Okay, and so when we write this, we're going to go CA bracket CH3 COO, and we're going to put a two down here. So again, we use this bracket um, to uh, show that the, the entire ion itself, okay, this negative ion has a charge of negative one, and we need two total ions to balance that up. So again, do the practicing here. Um, just practice, practice, go through a lot of repetition, get used to where things are in the table of polyatomic ions. And again, don't worry about memorizing things, but be familiar with where they are and um, uh, where they're located in the periodic table and you'll do fine. See you in class.